Have you wanted to be able to live stream your events to social media platforms like LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook? And have you wanted to be able to do that with Microsoft Teams? If you have, then keep watching because this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you the whole end-to-end -end process for doing that. But first of all, the question is why? A lot of corporate webinars and similar events are tending to move to social media platforms because people don't want to necessarily come into a different technology to join a webinar, and they do want a more informal format as well. And of course, you know, you need a bit of polish to differentiate yourself from the crowd. Now, Microsoft Teams has webinar functionality, which is really good, and there's new stuff that's came into Teams, like standout mode that allows us to put ourselves into the meeting that make all of this content really, really good. And Teams Live events are very easy to use and set up, but sometimes you want to get to the platform that your people are on. And when you're using a third-party tool like StreamYard, then those aren't bad tools. However, they're not so great for people who are presenting at your event. So if you've got people who are presenting at your event and they're used to using Microsoft Teams, they'll expect functionality like together mode or perhaps background blur or background replacement to just work. They'll expect noise cancellation. They'll expect it to work well with the right headsets that you've already purchased for your staff. And of course, joining one of those web-based tools, then the video quality is usually okay. However, you won't be able to replace your background. You won't be able to have noise cancellation. And often people have trouble picking the right microphones and stuff like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of the steps. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what you need to do to live stream an event from start to finish. We'll start with the administrator tasks where we need to enable this for our Microsoft 365 environment. We'll also have a look at the tools we're going to use. So NDI is one of those. OBS is another of those. We'll go through the setup of those. They're straightforward to set up industry standard tech, and we'll also connect it to a live streaming platform and stream out over YouTube. And we'll show you that full end-to-end -end process. And it is straightforward. So within the next quarter of an hour, you're gonna learn how to do all of this. So let's get started. As an admin over in the Teams Admin Center, I need to go and either adjust an existing meeting policy so that it supports OBS. So if I wanted to do this for everybody, I click on global org wide default and then i can switch on ndi streaming if i want it just for the people that are going to act as our producers the people that join the meeting and then press start broadcast then i can create a new policy and inside that new policy i can then go and add in ndi streaming once that's enabled then they'll be able to stream now, if I need to get my computer set up and ready to go, then I need to install OBS first. So you go to the obsproject.com website, and then if you're running Windows, download the Windows version. Now, you'll also need the NDI plugin. So that's found within the OBS website. And if you search for OBS-NDI, you'll find it. Now, we'll click on the link to GitHub, and that's where we'll find the download. Scroll down to Releases, and then you'll need to pick the Windows installer. First install OBS, then install the NDI plugin. With both of those installed, we'll be ready to go. Now, I've pre-configured OBS with some of the bits that we need. Now, OBS is split into several sections, but it is fairly simple. We have scenes, and the scenes are the things that we'll cut between. So the scenes are our different layouts. They contain the graphics, the backgrounds, and they'll contain our video streams. And then for each scene, we've got a list of sources. Now, this one just has a single one. So when you watch Practical 365 on YouTube, then you'll see an intro. And that is, as you can see on the screen here, a video. And then we've got the end of the video that you'll see here. Again, this is just a video file that gets played. We can add all sorts of sources, and you'll see in our list we've got NDI, but we can also add in things like display capture, audio input capture, media, text. We can arrange things as we want. It's very straightforward. As a producer, we can do something very interesting inside OBS. So we can make sure that our presenters can see the video feed that's going out. We can do that by choosing to start a virtual camera. What that will give us when I press this is the ability inside Microsoft Teams to be able to actually see 
what everybody else is seeing. They won't need to go to that YouTube page to watch the stream. It will be there for them to see. Now, before we can start streaming, then we'll need to set things up. So if I now go over to YouTube Studio, then I can set up OBS to work with this. So it's very straightforward. All I need to do is go and find the stream key and press copy. And then over in OBS, I'll go into stream and then I'll pick YouTube from the list and then I can paste in that stream key. That's going to allow us as soon as we press start streaming to go live. I'm not going to do that yet though. So what I'll need to first of all do is get Teams to interface with OBS. Now that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go to settings inside my Teams client. I'm the producer for this and I'll switch on NDI. That's going to, that's going to enable it for any meeting that I want. However, I'll need to start NDI to actually make it work. So I'm going to press computer audio. I'll just show you the webcam feature here where you can see what the viewer would see and share that with the rest of the meeting. They won't see it reversed like that. That's just mirrored because it's expecting a webcam. I'll turn that off for now, though. Now I'm inside this meeting. It is just a standard meeting, right? You can see the meeting room device that I've got behind me just here. And you can see all of my participants and you can see the screen share that's also going on alongside this. To get everything ready, I need to set up the meeting so it all works the right way. So I'm going to press on the ellipses and because I'm going to use a panel session in this, I'm going to add together mode. So that's the same one that you can see over my shoulder here. I also want to be able to make sure that we can see the video feeds for all of the participants as well. Now, in the Teams client, although NDI is going to take the individual video streams, we do have to make sure that they're actually displayed on screen. So that makes sure that the Teams client itself has configured itself to receive the, the video feeds screen share. So we've got to do a couple of things to get that up and running. And I do that by clicking on the ellipses for each person and I'll choose pin. So I'll go through these in order. Very quick, these are all the people that will want to be able to view in the meeting. I'll press pin for all of these people. And now you'll see that I've got my together mode scene and I've got all of my people. Now, what you see on the screen here, that's not what we're going to share. We're not going to share a screen grab of this. What we're going to do is click on the ellipses and now press broadcast over NDI. Now, not much changes once I do this. Our meeting presenters will see a warning telling them that this is going to be broadcast over NDI. But until we actually get those meeting streams, nothing actually happens. Now, if I open up my client here, then this is where I'm going to be able to add in my panel session, add in my participants, all of the components that I need for my live broadcast. So if I click on interview with background here, you'll see one I prepared earlier and you'll see straight away I brought in two different panelists to have a chat over Teams. If I click on interview with full screen, then I've done the same, but I've got a side by side view. Now to make this work, what I need to do, and I'll click on panel session here, is add my NDI source. So you'll see I've already arranged this with a transparent PNG image. I've also added in a title uh, and that is just freeform text that I add in and in the background I've got a video that's on a loop which is this one behind us here. Just on a star loop over and over again gives it a little bit of style. Now this backing screen here I've added as a placeholder so I can see the dimensions that I want 1440 by 810. Now you could literally just choose to drag and drop this to the size you want. So I'll show you that first and then I'll show you how we can be a little bit more clever when it comes to sizing the content if you want to make sure that it always displays the, the same way. So I'm going to call this panelists uh, and I'll choose a source name. This will be audience from the list here. Um, I'll allow hardware acceleration and this will pop up in just a second onto the screen. Now it's here, I can either resize it to the size that I want or I'll use transform, edit transform and then I can choose how this is going to stretch or scale 
and then I can add in the size that I want for this here. So if I want this to be 1440 by 810, then I'll pop that in there and then I'll just position that in the right place uh, inside this. Now I can remove that background that was sitting behind it and I've got my panel session ready to go. So if I want to then add in something like a screen share, then I've dropped in uh, to get us started this new NDI source and I picked screen share from the list. So again, if I want to, I can resize that to the size I want or I can use transform to do that. Now, then I can bring in either perhaps these two folks. So if I've added those as NDI sources like this and then select them from the list down here, whoever I want to bring into this, Alan, for example, press OK, and then that's going to bring them in. Or I can do it a slightly different way where I can bring them in from one of our other panels here. So I've got those two people here. Perhaps we're going to switch over so they do a screen session. So I paste both of these in by Control C and Control V, and then I just position them in the right place. So I'll resize them to about this size here ready for my broadcast. Now, of course, you can, of course, reuse these across multiple broadcasts as well. And then I've got my two folks ready to go. Now, say we're ready to go and broadcast and we've got all of the different parts ready. We want to be able to introduce the guests, move to our panel session and finish. How do we start? So we've got two options for the way that we can run this we can choose studio mode. So if you've used Teams Live Events, then you'll be familiar with this concept where we get ready to go and then we press transition. Um, or we can just use the view that we we're in before where we just click between the different ones that we want. So it's up to you. Uh, as the producer, I'm gonna pick studio mode. I've got my people in the meeting. So let's get ready. Let's tell them that we're ready to go. Take myself off mute, right? We're going live in just a second. You're going to see my screen in the meeting here. Uh, you'll see things as they're ready to go out. Now that's ready, I need to actually press start streaming. So my stream's going to start and I'm going to get my introduction ready. That says it's streaming. So I'm going to start my intro. Now, inside YouTube Studio, then you'll see that because I set up my stream, this is going to go out at the moment. This is going to go out live now. I don't want to be switching between this to watch what's going out live at the same time, but I should have confidence that it's going out. So sensible thing, if you've got another screen to watch it on, much as you would with any of these other platforms, do so. But what we're looking at here on screen at the moment, that this is the live view that we need to be concerned with. So if we're starting our broadcast, we transition through the introduction uh, and we're ready to go. We transition through the introduction and we're ready to go. Then we want to go straight over to our introduction. As you can see, I've got these two folks talking to camera here and they're going to go over and say, right now, let's go over to the main interview. And here's our two people ready to speak up. They pop on the screen and they might talk for a few minutes. Now in the live stream, this is what people will be seeing at home. This is an absolutely fantastic. It's much better better than you'll get as a result with other similar technologies because we're using the, the proper stuff right now they've been talking for a while and then we get our screen share ready to go and we're listening to our folks talking along and they say right now let's go and show you how it all works we press transition and it will move across to them now when they're finished perhaps we're going to go back to our folks who are introducing their, their posts of the show now they're going to move over and say right now it's time to go to our panel session we transition across to that and of course once we finish off we're ready to do our ending i press transition again and we're done we've been able to do all of that using obs and as you can see apart from the setup of arranging things like the background video logos and so on which you'll do with every other platform bringing the sources in getting these ready to go so we can broadcast out over OBS using NDI is very, very straightforward. If we jump back into that Teams meeting, then remember from the perspective of our presenters, this has just been a normal Teams meeting. So they've been able to have all the benefits of just being able to join as normal, all the security benefits of Teams, all of the audio and video capabilities of Teams, and the producer 
has just had to switch on that NDI functionality and then start broadcasting through OBS to the platform of your choice. It's much simpler than having people having to go to a third party platform and then go in and then deal with some of those downsides as well. And of course, the people that are going to watch your content, well, they won't care what platform we're using to get it out there. We're just going to have really good quality audio and video and we're going to be able to reach them on the platforms that we choose. So, if you want to learn more about this, then check out practical365.com. I've got a blog post on this. You'll find that in the description below. And if you've liked this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our channel for more interviews and how-to videos.